Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. Hey, this week we're going to do another list video and I want to do my top 10 most asked questions about the Grand Valley layout. Um, you'd be surprised how many people ask me a lot of the same questions about the kit and about the layout and everything. So we're going to address those today on Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. Stay tuned. All right, we're gonna get started with the questions here in just a second. I just wanna uh, say thanks to all you new subscribers and uh, just point out that we do have merch available, uh, merchandise down in uh, below the video, uh, below comments, got hats, uh, mugs and different things. And uh, remember to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. And uh, also uh, the super thanks, if you guys feel so inclined to help out the channel, and to help us move forward, uh, consider doing a thanks, uh, super thanks, and that would be greatly appreciated. All right, without any further ado, let's get to the top 10 questions that I'm asked about the Grand Valley layout. All right, I went ahead and stopped the train so we don't have the noise to contend with and uh, me having to watch it for derailments and stuff like that. So let's get to the first question, and that is number 10, what radius are the curves on the kit? Well, the curves are 18 inch radius curves. If you buy the track pack or you just buy them individually, the plan calls for 18 inch curves. And that's what the track, uh, the plan utilizes. So that leads us to question number nine. Can you run large locos on the layout? All right. Well, that kind of is a no. <laughs> uh, with these 18 inch curves, it's best to run smaller four axle locomotives like switchers, F units, uh, GP40s. I run GP38 2s. Uh, you're not going to really be able to run SD70s on this. Uh, there, it's just not going to work. You're going to have really bad clearance uh, with the tunnels, uh, the curves in the tunnels. And then uh, one of the inherent problems we've talked about before is the curvature going in and coming out of the bridge. Uh, unless you modify that, you're going to have issues with larger locomotives. So the answer to that one is no. Question number eight. How many power feeds do you have? Well, on this layout, I have three. <laughs> uh, I have one right here, right near the front of the layout by my station. I have another one right over there by that blue car on the inside of the uh, inner loop. And then I have another one right over here in my yard. That's really all I have found I've needed. Um, I know a lot of guys will say you need a power feed every foot. You need to have a bus line with, you know, all kinds of power going to it. But this layout is not that big. And I've gotten away with three for just, you know, as long as I've had the, the layout going and it hasn't been a problem. If you want to do more, you're certainly welcome to do that. You can, you know, as you're building it, you if you're going to expand, you can you know, wire it, pre-wire it, so you've got lots of feeds. But for me, I've gotten away with three, and it's been just fine. Question number seven, how long did it take you to build it? <laughs> I get that one a lot. Well, for me, it took about two months to, you know, from the time I opened up the box till the time I had trains running on it. But... That being said, I was taking my time and I was doing a lot with uh, uh, making sure that the track beds were flat and everything was smooth. Uh, now, it took a lot longer than that to get all the details 
the grass, the trees, the rocks, paint, the roads, everything. But from the time I opened the box till, you know, from, you know, I should even say building the bench to uh, opening the box and getting it all laid out, um, I'd say about two months. That was working weekends and, you know, taking my time. Of course, if you have the time, it really wouldn't take that long. It's styrofoam that you hot glue together. The hardest part was doing the plaster cloth. But again, everybody works at a different pace. That's how long it took me. All right, question number six. Is the kit hard to build? And the answer to that is no. Uh, you know, it comes with really detailed instructions, uh, lots of uh, pictures and uh, diagrams and illustrations on how to build it. It's basically, like I said, working with styrofoam, hot glue, uh, risers, and everything else. It, it really is not difficult to build. I would say if you weren't a carpenter, it would be hard for you to build a bench, but Woodland Scenics has them available. You can buy uh, modular benches that would be enough to uh, accommodate a four by eight layout. So uh, I would say building the bench was probably the hardest part of it, but I'm a woodworker, so that wasn't hard. Uh, building the kit is a snap following the instructions. It's very detailed and it's pretty easy. Question number five, did the kit come with the track and the buildings? The answer to that is no, unfortunately it does not. Those are separate expenses that you have to buy. Either buy, they, Atlas makes a track pack and I've discussed this before. They make the track pack for the entire layout, everything you need, or you can buy it separately. The, the instruction manual has uh, uh, layout uh, instructions of exactly how many pieces of track you'll need in every piece. So you can buy it on your own. It is cheaper to buy the track pack. The buildings, I bought the city and industry building set, and that came with 15 buildings, all of the buildings that are on the layout, uh, minus a couple here that I put on separately, like the uh, appliance store and, of course, Miss Molly's Diner. Those did not come in the track pack, but the 15 basic buildings that, uh, you, that you see on the box of the uh, Grand Valley layout are in this kit. Question number four, does the Grand Valley layout kit come in N scale? Answer to that is no, it does not. It is only available in H scale, um, as per the making of this video anyway. However, uh, Woodland Scenics does offer some other kits in N scale, like the Scenic Ridge and River Pass kits. They have them in HO and N scale. I don't know why they don't have this one in N scale. Um, it could be converted if you wanted to run N scale on this. You certainly could. You could lay N scale track, make everything a bit smaller, get smaller tunnel portals. I have been asked that before. Can this be made N scale? I'm sure it could. Uh, it would take some modifications, but that's the nice thing about these kits is you can easily modify them. Question number three, does temperature affect the layout? Well, that is a very good question, and uh, certain people have made videos about that, and I have seen it, and the short answer is yes. As you can see, I have my layout next to a window, and uh, the sun in the summertime does uh, shine in here. I have never had the need, though, to put a blind in the window. Uh, sometimes I will block it with my background there a little bit, uh, but... Temperature does affect the track bed. This is a foam track bed. And on top of the foam riser, there's a uh, styrofoam track bed that can expand and contract. I do have a little bit of trouble right in this area. 
Sometimes when it's very hot, that will expand and create a bump where I didn't get it quite flat enough and I'll experience decoupling there. Sometimes derailment, but most often decoupling. Uh, cold doesn't seem to affect it as much as heat. Uh, usually my issues are on this side of the layout when it gets hot. I do have some issues inside the tunnel over there where I wasn't quite careful enough with the roadbed, and that surfaces once in a while causing a derailment, uh, but it's not too bad. Uh, being in a cool basement like I have helps a lot, even in the summertime with this window here. I don't it doesn't get very hot in here. So a cool climate uh, helps to maintain it and keep it at a constant temperature. I do have a vent right above where heat and cold can come out. A lot of the times I will have that shut off, but sometimes I do turn it on. So yes, it does affect it, but not greatly. I also want to add to that that I do know of people who have built the kit and had it in a garage or a shed or a barn, and it does affect it greatly being outdoors or in a building like that, where mine is in a basement. Again, it's more protected. It's in the house, basically. But yeah, if you were building it in a, you know, an outdoor shed, you might have more issues with temperature uh, than I do. Question number two, is it better to build the kit or to build a layout from scratch by yourself? Well, <laughs> that's kind of a complicated question for me, uh, being that I was sort of new into the whole thing. For me, it was easier to buy the kit to get started with. Um, it has everything you need. You can see the steps here, uh, you know, with all the styrofoam, the steps that you go through, you know, to complete the kit. And it just seemed like the better way for me to go. Now that I have experience, I would say, yeah, I could build my own layout like I did, you know, on wood or with uh, styrofoam or form foam board from the big box stores and, and do it myself. I certainly could. But as I got started in it and I, you know, I wasn't really sure about how it went, I think getting the kit was the best thing for me. That might be different from you, but uh, for you, but definitely the kit was the way to go for me. All right, and finally, the number one question that I'm asked about the Grand Valley Layout Kit. How much did it cost you? <laughs> well, again, that's hard to uh, put into solid numbers. I mean, there was a lot of stuff I bought extra, but there was a lot of stuff that was included in the kit. Let's go over to the bench. I've got a little list over there. So just recently, I was looking online to, to just do a little shopping and see what the kit is going for, the track pack, and the buildings. So that being said, I've seen the Grand Valley layout at train sets only for $480. Uh, other retailers have it for, I've seen it as much as $650. Um, but you can get it for under $500 if you shop around a little bit. The track pack is not bad. I saw it at train sets only also for 126. Um, not bad. I think I paid about 100 for it. That was in 2018. So it's gone up, but it hasn't gone up that badly. The city and industry set is pricey at 255. That's at train sets only also, trainsetsonly.com. But uh, if you think about buying those buildings individually, if you get finished buildings, those HO buildings are like anywhere from $70 to $120, lighted, you know, all painted and everything. The kits run anywhere from $30 to $50, depending on which kit you get. Uh, some can be as low as $20 or $30, but if you add all that up, this is a good value if you want all of those sets. So for me... Uh, I would say about a thousand dollars. That's with uh, the trains that I bought. I didn't have any type of uh, controller at the time. Uh, I bought the uh, well, let me grab it and I'll show you the set that I bought to get started with DCC. 
So not having any DCC trains or really any DC trains that operated, I bought the Bachman Digital Commander set, which came with a DCC controller. And of course, the two locos that I just showed you over there on the layout, the GP40 and the F unit. I got some other ones along the way through eBay, some other cars that went with this set. Uh, this set was less than $200 when I bought it. So that included, I would say, I spent about a thousand. Uh, that included the lumber for the bench and some incidentals, extras, extra paint. Uh, I would say anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred, probably. Uh, like I said, it's hard to pinpoint, but uh, yeah, that's about what I spent, and I think that was a good deal to get me started in the hobby. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, I hope this video helped you. Uh, if you're considering buying the Grand Valley Layout Kit or you're in the middle of building one, I hope these questions and answers have helped. I want to thank all you guys for your comments uh, and suggestions. If you have any comments or suggestions about uh, content or upcoming things you'd like to see, please let me know in comments. It helps me a lot to know what you guys are looking for and the kind of content I can provide for you guys. Uh, about the live video, um, probably not going to happen this Saturday. I'm hoping maybe next Saturday, but watch the community posts that I put up. Uh, I will definitely let you guys know when that's going to happen. There is a possibility it could happen this Saturday uh, around noonish, but uh, still not sure. Watch those community posts and I'll let you know. All right, that's all I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much. You guys take care, and we'll see you next video.